let's talk Portuguese. In today's I'm Bom Português, we're going to be talking about something that's much simpler than it seems at first glance, despite how many people it often trips up. We're going to be talking about the Portuguese equivalent of their, their, and their, or its, and its, or whose, and whose, and other similar homophone pairings. That's right. We're going to be talking about kras and a, a, and ah. So when we talk about these homophone pairings, what we're talking about are words that sound the same but are written differently and therefore cause confusion when we're trying to write something coherent. That is inconvenient enough, but in Portuguese we also deal with what we call kras. Kras is what happens when we combine words together to form other words. English speakers will already be familiar with how this happens in Spanish. In Spanish, if you have a and el, you have al. It's the same thing in Portuguese, but we will get Get there in just a moment. In Portuguese, when it comes to the difference between a, 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 and even the erroneous a, there are a few things to have in mind. These homophones are probably single-handedly the most common, if not the most famous, grammatical mistake that people make when they're writing in Portuguese, whether they're native speakers or just learning the language. And yet the distinction between them is fairly simple. We start out with the word a, which comes from the verb haver. This is the easiest one of the bunch because it's the only one that has an extra letter. Because it comes from the verb haver, it always has an H. And a from haver most often means one of a couple of things. First, we have the meaning of ago, which is synonymous with faz. You can say a tres anos or faz tres anos. In both cases, it means three years ago, and then you can continue on with your sentence. The other primary meaning of a is to say there is or there are. When we have a situation where we want to say there is or there are, we can say a. Ah. For example, a pão na padaria. There is bread at the bakery. But it doesn't matter whether you're saying there is or there are. You could just as well say a três fatias de pão. There are three slices of bread. So far, so simple. But let's get into what I really wanted to talk about today, which is the cras in Portuguese. Because cras is the combination of two grammatically distinct words, when we want to use a uh, or a, uh, we have to think carefully about the grammar behind it. A uh, on its own can be a preposition, meaning to or for in English, but it can also be a feminine definite article or the. So if in Spanish we have a uh, and el to get Al in Portuguese, it's pretty simple. We can combine words like a and u, or a and aquil, or a and a to get ao, aquil, and a. This is where the confusion comes in. One of the main reasons that people get confused with kras is that they think that kras means location, that kras in and of itself indicates a preposition, as if we were speaking French or something, which is how we end up with constructions like a época or a milan. However, a is quite simply the combination of a, meaning to or for, and a, meaning the. So in a basic sense, if we want to say something like vo a milan, in order to determine whether we use the kras or not, we have to think about what we're saying. In English, we would say I'm going to Milan. You can see that there's just one grammatical function going on here because we don't say the Milan. In Portuguese, it's much the same, so we end up with vo a milan without kras. This can apply to a whole host of situations, and geography can be a complicated subject when it comes to the use of the article or not. In Portuguese, many places seemingly at random have an article or don't. There are some countries in the world where the article is optional and therefore kras itself is optional. But when it comes to other places like regions, towns, neighborhoods, and so on, the use of the article is determined by the etymology of how the place is called. And therefore we say vo a Lisboa, but we say vo ao Porto. There are exceptions to all of this and it can get more complicated, but we have something just a little bit more complicated to continue along with. The other most common thing that trips people up when they're deciding whether to write with kras or not is with phrases and phrasal verbs. That in Portuguese is called regencia, and regencia is one of the most complicated aspects of Portuguese grammar. Now in the case of phrasal verbs or phrases in general, which prepositions go with which verbs is a complicated question, and I don't have enough time in this video to detail exactly which verbs use a and which verbs use other prepositions. If you are a Portuguese native speaker, you will already have an intuitive idea of this, and if you are a learner, you will learn those over time in your classes while speaking with other people and while reading and listening to Portuguese being spoken. But when we look at the grammar involved in those cases, it's just the same as before. If we want to say the church, we would say a igreja, but if we want to say something like in front 
of the church. Combining of and the, we could say something like frente a igreja. Combining a uh, the preposition and a uh, the article to mean of the church. In situations like these, the words might not translate exactly, but their grammatical functions usually will. We have little indicators as to what the words mean in order to determine whether we're writing with kras or without it. But there's just one last little thing that we have to cover about a, uh, a, uh, and a, uh, which is the non existence of a uh, with the accent pointing to the right. That accent is called the acute accent or acento agudo, and although acento agudo is the default accent for indicating stress and other things in Portuguese, in the case of Kras, we need to listen to Beyonce and go to the left, to the left. The accent is on the left. That accent is called a grave accent or acento grave, and it is unique to Kras in Portuguese. We only really encounter that accent in Portuguese in instances of Kras, such as a, as, Aquil, and so on. So, in sum, we have a from a ver, a meaning to or for, a meaning the, and a meaning to the. What we don't have is a pointing to the right. And that's all I've got for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, if you learned something or otherwise found it interesting, give me a thumbs up with the little thumb down below. You might think about subscribing to my channel if you're not already. I make videos about food, culture, and indeed, the Portuguese language. You can find those videos in playlists in the eye above, and I will see you next time. Thank you.